are divine. Everything you see, smell, touch, taste, feel, everything you experience, you experience for the divine. Every time you go out into the world and try something new, think, oh, what is this and how is that? And oh, this kind of curiosity. The divine is there loves curiosity, loves this idea of exploring and tasting and, and smelling and trying new things. This is exactly at the point where you're most excited as well, isn't it? That kind of curiosity where you're looking out, you're, the, the, this kind of seeming outside world hasn't slapped you back, made you behave in a certain way. You're out there like, oh, what is this like? What is that like? You know, you see a kid on the ground and they're like picking up a stick and sticking it in their mouth or some kind of dirty thing. You're like, oh my God, how could you do that? Ugh. And you know, you learn from experience. Yes, some of these things taste bad or, or, um, or in fact taste good. Um, I remember sharing little nuggets of dog food with my dog when I was a kid and everyone thought, well, you know, like, well, you're trying to stop me. And, but we just, we had this connection, me and the dog. Did it kill me? Obviously not. So we all, if we could all have in some way within, let's say, reason, this kind of curiosity for life, where we're going out every single day, tasting, trying, exploring the world, it will be a heck of a lot more fun. And that's exactly what we need in our lives, don't we? We need to experience joy in the small day-to-day -day things. It's not just like, you know, these big experiences like going on holiday or something like that where we think, oh yeah, now we're on an adventure. Every day can be an adventure because we can be curious. There's so many things, even in the world around us that we don't know. I, I don't know, you know, how my spleen works. I don't know the internal parts of my own body really. You know, of course I studied biology, you know, at high school, but I don't, I don't remember any of this stuff. I could be exploring that kind of thing. I could be exploring um, you know, how things work in my home. If I, if I felt like I was lacking that kind of curiosity for life. But instead we kind of be just accepting the things around us. We turn on the lights, we walk into the next room, maybe we're looking at our phones, the AI is sort of slowly kind of taking over our lives and we're not curious or engaged in anything. And then we feel, we wonder, oh, why do we feel bad? because we've fallen into this routine and every time we've been curious or tried to explore in the past, we've been slapped back. We're trying to grow beyond our, our limitations or the way that people expect us to be, think, feel, right? But we don't have to do that. We can go out and do exactly what we need to do and exactly what we want to do and experience the world in exactly the way that we want to. We know this because when we see people who are engaged, who are curious, who are excited about things, that's appealing to us, isn't it? We see someone there like, oh my God, I just want to try this. You can be that person. You can say, well, I don't feel that way. You can control, can, if you want to call it control, you can guide your own feeling system. You can work on where you place and focus your attention. And you can start to create the situations in your life where you feel enthusiastic, where you feel curious, and you can start to explore things. It could be any, bit or piece of your life that you find interesting. That's why people who have hobbies really are happier, aren't they? They find something that they love. It doesn't have to even be the thing that they do for work and they can just dive into that and be engaged in that. Some people find it in athleticism and they're kind of going to the gym or they're doing other kinds of activities or they're out in nature, whatever it is. If you're, if you're curious and engaged in the life that you're living, it's one of the best ways to deal with stress, anxiety, and this feeling of not knowing. Because it's through this activity, it's through this engagement in life that we find connection to the divine. And then when we, at moments, go into retreat or fall into the beautiful silence of emptiness, and we feel this expanse that is us, that's our hearts, we feel the, the overwhelming oneness that is creation. This is our right. We are here 
to engage with life, to experience exactly the life that we want to experience. And the way to do it is to allow ourselves to be curious, to be engaged, to be active in our own lives. This is your life. You have a chance to do exactly what you need to or want to do. No one else has a right to put limitations on you, to stop you from doing the things that you want to do. And we see it again and again. We can look at people who, against all odds, achieve all kinds of amazing, great things, whether they're physical limitations or um, mental limitations, whether there's people who have stopped them from doing things and they fight through and they do something and you think, oh yeah, what an inspiration. You can do this. You don't have to fight insurmountable odds. The insurmountable odds are the things that we're preventing ourselves from doing, from living the life that we want. Every single day, we have a chance to go out and be engaged and curious and excited about the things that we have right in our day-to-day -day life. And if we do that, the whole of our existence becomes more and more expansive, more and more wonderful, more and more fantastic. We don't have to go to some yoga retreat. We don't have to sit in meditation for, for 25 years. All we have to do is engage with the actual things that come into our life right now because they are the things that we live every day. And in fact, it's that way for everyone. If you're at a yoga retreat, I've been to many yoga retreats. If you're at a meditation retreat, it's at many, I've been to many meditation retreats. And it's in the little moments. It's in the, the breakfast. It's in the putting your clothes on in the morning and looking out at this new space. It's in the connection in the eyes of other people that you see there. That's where the, that's where the magic is. It's not in some kind of mystical experience or some extreme um, uh, LSD-like experience that you might have as you start to go deeper and deeper into meditation or into some kind of deep breath work exercise. That's not it at all. The beauty is in the curiosity, the engagement, and the love that you share with other people as you go through your day-to-day -day existence. That's what makes a difference, and you can have that every single day. Peace.